All right, what, what, is, what does it say? Can anyone guess? Quickly, quickly, quickly. If something can be done in JavaScript, it will be done in JavaScript. <laughs> That's what that word's noise. Um, so I was a little worried about the fact that, you know, the HasGeek guys have not put a parallel track uh, and, and they've given me 45 minutes. That was very scary. I walked up to Kiran and Zainab and I told them, dude, what the hell's going on? And, uh, and they were like, no, we just want people to be gathered around here when we are doing the feedback, so don't worry. That's, that's what they told me. So uh, I'm going to go with that for now. Um, You said 1024 by All right, let's talk about robots. Robots with lasers? No, no lasers this time, sorry. Um, and I'm not talking about robots that are controlled by JS. That's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's fun and you know, that's cool. I'm talking about running JS on the robot, right? So it's not just controlling robots by JS. It's having a node instance running on the robot that you can now program to do what you want, right? I don't know if everyone's here, uh, everyone here is familiar with the Raspberry Pi. In fact, Kiran's got a Raspberry Pi outside, so you can have a look at that. It's right at the entry, so you know, uh, you could probably have a look at that. It's a, it's, a, it's a $35 computer. It's a really small computer. It's a piece of hardware. It, it, it's literally a PCB that you buy, which has got, it's credit card size. It's really small. You can install Debian on it, uh, which is awesome. And it has got external hardware programmable pins, right? So this is a photograph of the Raspberry Pi. It's about the size of a credit card. It's really small. Uh, yeah, there it is. Right? And to give you a sense of the size, this is how small it is. It's really, really small. But what's interesting to me is, is, uh, uh, is these pins right here. These are called the general purpose input-output pins, GPIO which are pins that you can control from inside your application uh, to do stuff. You can set those pins high, which is not high in like our sense, but high in, <laughs> high in the digital sense, right? Like set it high or set it low, right? Um, so that's, what it's, that's what's exciting to me. So when I got the Pi, the first thing I wanted to do, of course, is, is to install Node on it, uh, no doubt. Uh, it was more painful than I thought, but at least it worked after some tries. Uh, two and a half hours or so for compilation, uh, but it worked. It worked awesome. Um, so, 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 yeah. Another photograph right there, at the bottom right. You can see the GPIO pins. Uh, very, very exciting, and that's that's the reason why I bought my first Raspberry Pi in the first place. <laughs> it's somewhere here, but never mind. I, let's hope this works. Anyway, so, so when I got the Raspberry Pi, I started programming around with it. I created uh, a project on, on uh, GitHub to help just with that. Um, so it's called, it's called Pi GPIO. Uh, the Pi stands for Raspberry Pi, not my last name. Uh, and uh, so all you do is you require uh, Pi GPIO, and then you can like, specify a pin for output. You can have a pin either for output or for input. And, uh, and then you can write a 1 to that pin, or you can write a 0 to that pin, right, which is happening right there on the second line. Um, and you can close the pin. So it's a really simple model with which you can, you can uh, you know, start playing with the pins and start setting pins high and low. So that's fun. Um, but now, you know, how about we start doing more funky stuff? Let's run a motor off of that. 
Um, so with my primitive Google skills, I found that there is this IC called L293D, which is apparently uh, a family of ICs really, which has got, uh, which, is, which is what is known as a motor driver, and we can get into the complexity of how it works. But essentially it lets you control motors digitally, so you can like set a pin high or you can set a pin low, and then you can get the motors to move. Um, and uh, so I created Pi Motor, uh, the name's obvious, uh, which lets you, you know, define a, create a motor object in Node, and then turn the motor clockwise or counterclockwise uh, using, you know, just this much code. Right, so it's really simple, counterclockwise, and you can stop it, of course. Um, so really simple API, I, I'm a huge fan of, of simple APIs, so, you know, I, I thought this was easy enough. Um, so we've got a motor running now. Um, how about adding some more stuff? If I can run Node on the Raspberry Pi, I can run a web server on the Raspberry Pi. And if this is on wheels, we've got web server on wheels, right? <laughs> and then why stop at a web server? Let's add a socket.io server, right? And, and so we can, we can do a lot of fun stuff, right? So uh, here we go. Um, Can you see that thing in the plastic? Can you see the thing in the, in the plastic there? That's the, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, here's, here's another view. Can you see that SD card sticking out at the bottom? That's the hard disk. Uh, <laughs> it is, it is, I'm not kidding. And these, these wires that you see coming out from the top, that's connecting to the GPIO. I added the plastic because I, have, I had like roughed up the, the Raspberry Pi like twice or thrice already. So, uh, so I added the plastic to sort of give it some sort of protection. Uh, the, whole, the huge thing on the top is, is, uh, is a battery. Turned out I was actually draining my batteries pretty quickly. Um, and uh, I don't know if the camera will capture this. You just, you just hold it still, so keep it on the ground. You can keep it on the ground and twist it. Well, it'll focus itself. Um, no uh, it's focusing on the wrong thing, I guess. Well, never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's, it's probably the lighting's too bad anyway. Um, so, so what I wanted to show you was that I've got the L29, uh, L293D uh, IC running at the bottom. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, there it goes. So, so uh, this thing right here, this thing right here is the L293 IC. Um, and uh, that's connected up to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and, uh, and now I should be able to drive the car around, right? Uh, <laughs> so, so let's get started. Uh, obviously now how do I drive the car? Uh, the first thing I would need to do is, is get node running. So for that I would have to SSH into the car. <laughs> Can we, uh, can we uh, switch to the, this, this thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so, uh, so I've wired it up with, uh, with Wi-Fi as well, so it's actually got a Wi-Fi uh, hub on it. Um, uh, it's got a USB hub to which there is a, a Wi-Fi controller uh, thing attached. So it's actually hooked up to the network right now. Um, and so I SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, there we go. So we are now inside the Raspberry Pi. Um, this is all running inside the Pi, right? And uh, so, uh, let's see. I start a WebSocket server on the Raspberry Pi, okay? This is, I kid you not, this is running on the Raspberry Pi, right? And now, so let's access the web page that's exposed by this. And if anyone gets the joke, uh, so <laughs> I decided to, um, 
So now I should be able to move the bot around. Uh, to just to be clear, I am what I'm going to do is I'm going to be emitting socket events from inside the browser that's going to be picked up by the web server on the Pi. That's going to then control using Pi motor and then Pi GPIO is going to control the motors running on the Raspberry Pi. I hope this works. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> That's really weak. There we go. <laughs> For some reason, forward movement isn't working. <laughs> Come on, move forward, man. <laughs> Kiran, can you just give us a little nudge and see if that works? <laughs> yeah, something's really messed up with it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because the surface is this uh, felt thing, right? Maybe because of that. <laughs> well, but it moves. You get the idea, right? <laughs> Maybe that will help. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> yeah, successful demo there. Um, <laughs> can we can we switch back to the? Sorry for the trouble, man. <laughs> All right, so so we sort of got the bot moving. Uh, not very exciting, but sort of. Uh, but the Pi has its limitations. Uh, one of the limitations is the fact that it runs Linux, and Linux, like most other desktop uh, or, for that matter, server uh, operating systems, is not a real-time operating system. So doing precise timing-based calculations is kind of hard. Um, and I wanted to sort of make it crazier, right? So uh, uh, if anyone's familiar with the Arduino, Sudar will be talking about it in far more detail tomorrow. Uh, but I decided why not go completely overboard with craziness and add an Arduino board to the to the to the bot as well. Uh, so that I can do things that are very timing specific. So for example, uh, oh yeah, before that, so I wrote a small uh, small firmware for the Arduino in C, uh, very, very small, less than like 50 lines of code, because my C skills are awesome. Uh, and so I, <laughs> you know, very small uh, uh, piece of code on C, that's basically talking over USB to the Pi, listening to instructions and then acting according to them. So uh, uh, I use uh, uh, Chris Williams' uh, Node serial port for doing this. Uh, as an aside, Chris Williams has been a huge help to the community. Not only did he build this, but he proactively got in touch with me to figure out how to get, how to, you know, uh, take this development further. So huge thanks to Chris if he ever watches this video in the future. Huge thanks to Chris. Um, so, so start going crazy with it. Uh, you know, how about adding more sensors? How about adding an ultrasonic sensor to it, right? An ultrasonic sensor, for those who don't know, is essentially a combination of a speaker and a mic, where the speaker emits a pulse of sound that's at a frequency that's ultrasonic, hence the name, uh, and then it sort of bounces off a target and comes back to you, uh, and you get to know how long it took. And so since you know the speed of, of sound, you can now figure out how far that distance was, right? So that's an ultrasonic sensor. Um, secondly, how about adding uh, a servo motor to it so that I can make the ultrasonic sensor move Right from place to place, so I can sweep across a larger area, um, and and you know has to do some client side stuff as well. So let's like let's add SVG to the mix, right? And like like make that funky, um, and of course all of this uh, uh, running straight from Node, right? So so here we go. Let me.
So what I'm going to do is for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to keep that there. Let's see if it can find it. Uh, and ask it to do a sweep. And so now, see that button at the top there? It says sweep. Uh, and what that's going to do is now that's going to use the Raspberry Pi to send instructions over a USB cable to the Arduino, uh, asking it to keep moving the motor from step to step and keep taking readings from there. Pipe that data back into uh, the Raspberry Pi. And then from the Raspberry Pi, using web sockets down to the client. This is clearly overkill. But, you know, <laughs> why not, right? Let's switch it. It's, well, it's not going to be moving right now anyway, so. Uh, okay. So, so this thing right here is the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, as you can see, it has got the speaker and the, the mic combo in front of it. It's uh, mounted on top of a motor at the bottom there. Right next to the motor you can see is the Arduino. Uh, and the Arduino over here is, ta -da! well, it's wired up over USB to the Raspberry Pi. Right? So I'm going to ask you to do a sweep. And let's see how that works. This is the Raspberry Pi talking to the Arduino, sending it instructions, getting data from uh, uh, the sweep sensor, and then sending it back into Arduino, and then into the Raspberry Pi, and then over WebSockets down to the client, right? Um, so uh, what I'll do is now let me see, let me show you what's happening on the client side of things. Right, so it's connected. And now when I ask for a sweep, you'll be able to see that it's like streaming all this data, right, that's coming in from the sensors into the pie. It's just a crazy amount of data that's coming through onto the client, ultimately, because you're using web sockets. Like metric tons of data. Um, and then it can now plot graphs like this. Thanks. Wow. This is using SVG. Uh, what it does is that it's taking distances at every angle starting from 0 degrees, which is over there, up to 90 degrees in front, and then 180 degrees over here, and then detecting objects, and then marking the distance of those objects as seen from the sensor on that radial plot, right? Uh, but obviously, it's not fun enough on it until it's real time, right? We are all noders, so it has to be real time. Thanks, thanks, thanks. This is literally uh, just two days ago that I built this uh, because, you know, building hardware is actually very, very hard. Uh, <laughs> it will fail in ways you did not know before. Uh, and if it fails, it's not like software where you can just download something, you have to walk to the shop. <laughs> uh, it's also expensive. Uh, you know, it's not like software. Um, so my next step, obviously, which I have not been able to achieve, and I don't know because obviously the surface is not seeming to work. I don't know if I'll be able to demo it. But my next step was to, to uh, get it to start thinking for itself and figure out from these kind of plots where it can now proceed on this map in front of it. Right? So avoid collisions and get to some goal in the distance automatically without me controlling it. So that's where I went on to create that plot at the top right which is, uh, which is essentially the same thing, but represented as, uh, as a horizontal uh, plot. And you know, just to make sense of this, let me move this a little closer here. 
do a sweep again. So what it's trying to do now is like detect the edges of where it can go to. And it has found that on top, right in front, obviously it cannot move because there is a dip there in the curve. And uh, so it creates this Boolean graph, which is a state of zeros or ones. Uh, ones representing where it can go and zeros representing where it can't go. Uh, and you know, it should then probably take a turn and go in that direction. So uh, again, I don't expect this to work, but if I ask it to move forward 90 degrees, there it goes. It moved a little bit and stopped. Uh, let's try this one more time. It's likely to fail, but let's just try it one more time. That's a horrible interface that I have to wait for the sweep every time. But Um, and can we switch to, yeah. So if you see the Boolean graph is actually all flat, it's all one, that means that it can move anywhere now. Uh, and let's see if that works. It's, I have asked it to go about six, 70 to 80 percent of the distance to that box and stop, though it doesn't look like it's working. Yeah, not working. <laughs> Something wrong with the surface. I guess if we can catch up later uh, outside, maybe I can show this off to you over there. Um, we'll switch back to the laptop. I think that's all I have. There you go, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looking for contributors and stuff. So if you are playing with the Raspberry Pi and you want to like, get your hands dirty with Node, uh, give it a spin uh, and you know, maybe we can build cool stuff together. It would be good fun. Thanks. Uh, any questions, let me know. <laughs> this is definitely overkill for hardware. Uh, the question was how much did the whole thing cost you? Uh, the Raspberry Pi, like if you, if you talk to a real enthusiast about hardware, he'll probably tell you that this could be built in like maybe, you know, two, three hundred bucks. Uh, whereas I have spent close to 10K. So it's, it's definitely overkill. Uh, is that including failures? Uh, yes, that is including failures and inclu some, to some extent including spares. Yeah, so, you know, you can imagine I had to buy a soldering iron, then I had to buy, <laughs> you know, uh, like solder metal and like, you know, there's, there was a lot of stuff that had to be bought because I just didn't have it. <laughs> So yeah, it's pretty expensive. Go ahead. So what are the problems that you had when you were building this? The things that software de developers wouldn't be, wouldn't consider when they start start off doing a hardware project. Uh, first of all, software side of things was as far as interfacing with the hardware goes was surprisingly simple. I did not know it's going to be this simple. Uh, it's amazing how, how Linux makes these pins available as a virtual file system. And then you basically echo a 1 or a 0 to a particular file and that sets the file high or low. Essentially that's what PyGPIO is doing if you look at the source code is essentially it's writing files. Right? And Linux then internally translates that to, to actually turning pins high or low. That was very simple. Uh, I guess Chris Williams has done the dirty work of how to talk over USB. And once uh, I just had to figure out how to use this library, which is actually very simple. And once I did that, talking to the Arduino as well was very simple. Uh, programming the Arduino, even though I'm not familiar with the language, turned out to be actually very simple as well. So the software side of things was not hard. Uh, the logical side of things was actually pretty crazy. Uh, freaking trigonometry <laughs> and calculus. And you know, like I stopped doing that 10 years ago, man. You know, <laughs> I did not know. I, like radial geometry and polar coordinates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is where that is where I spent a lot of my time, like cos theta and sine theta, and, you know, <laughs> arc tangent inverse, and <laughs> that, that was not fun. Uh, but that that turned out to be more complex than I thought. Um, 
and yeah, that's about it. And hardware, of course, uh, uh, you know, for the first time since uh, in 10 years, I justified my electrical engineering degree, I guess. I've not done that so <laughs> far. Uh, but yeah, that, I managed to do that. Oh my God, Aditya. Uh, any plans to hook up a USB webcam and open CV and make it follow you around? What, what do you want to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can be the mini Rakesh following you around. Or any plans to put lasers on it? Uh, <laughs> lasers. So there is totally, uh, in fact, the Raspberry Pi has got, and you know, they have not made this available yet, but it's got slots for connecting cameras to it directly. So you can now get data into the Raspberry Pi via camera, or you could probably get a, uh, you know, like a cheap USB camera or something and connect that up. So it's entirely possible to do that. And are OpenCV ports available for ARM processors? Uh, um, I don't know if that has anything to do with ARM processor, does it? Yeah, OpenCV has to be compiled to a processor, Oh, you right? mean, oh, like that. Uh, yeah. I thought you were talking about like hardware ports. Okay. Uh, no, so uh, there are, there are there's a surprisingly large amount of code that's available for ARM already. I was surprised myself. Uh, because I, I've seen no OpenCV module, so you can probably be really easy to hook up yeah, face yeah. detection and stuff like that. Yeah, that'll be neat. Yeah. And then you can follow you around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what kind of a load can this Raspberry Pi take, like in the processing power and all? Oh, uh, I don't have the ha exact hardware specs with me right off right now, but I think it's somewhere around 700 megahertz processor, um, and it's a 512 MB RAM. Uh, so it's not super powerful, but it's, it's, an it's awesome. It's an ARM processor, yes. Sorry? You can overclock it to up to 900, you void warranty, stuff like that. But oh, is it? That's neat. 1.1, that's crazy, man. And uh, <laughs> if you want to have a real-time sweeping and dictating an object, like... When it uh, is moving, is to it some possible? extent, Linux itself fails at real time, right? Because you can't. Real, real, Linux is not a real time operating system, so there's there's only a certain threshold to which you can go real time. You are not absolutely millisecond, microsecond real time on Linux. But uh, still, the processing power will it be able to manage? Uh, no, I the nature of Linux itself will not let it manage, let alone processing power. I mean, processing power is is already very good, but the nature of Linux. And the fact that it is switching tasks and running so many processes will not allow you to do very real-time stuff. So, you know, the OS itself has a limit. Near real-time is as close as you can get. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, if there are no questions, I'm going to give this a shot once again outside because I want to, like, not look so bad. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe, maybe it's the surface. I'm still betting that it's the surface. So, you know, if you can catch me outside, maybe we'll take this out for a spin. All right? See you. Thanks.